suppose I should have <coughs> included this. Uh, the big challenge you might have here is determining, you know, whether to use this ideal gas law or whether to use the combined gas law. However, there's some pretty significant giveaways. Obviously, if you have N, you know, if you have moles or grams or something, right away, you know, you got to use the ideal gas law. Nowhere in here do you have anything that accounts for, for moles or grams, right? No quantity. So you can't use that. So let's, uh, let's look at this one. Given the following sets of values, calculate the unknown quantities. Do you have the scissors still? Yeah, they're right here. Sorry. Yeah. So if you look here, these questions were laid out extremely, extremely easily, the first two. Like the variables are even labeled for you. So all you've got to do here, you see we're using PV is equal to NRT. Obviously, which variable is not given? V. V, yeah. So, because, I mean, it even tells you. I mean, ideal gas law, you're using PV. You're given an N, you're given a T. If, you're, if you see N, you, can, you, you have to use it. You have to use it. R is our constant. Remember, it is this variable right here. So R will always be 0 0.0821. You might somewhere see it as 0 0.08206. But that's that's usually done in AP classes in college, so we're just gonna do this. Wait, do we always have to put L and P on Yes, so for the first problem I want you to it. Just for the first problem. That's for R, right? Yes, that's R's units. That's mm -hmm. R. Yeah. So let me uh, let me give you an example here. I, I that's why I want to show you, I know. So let's write R in here too, just for the heck of it. Now, I just want to show you how R kind of works in this problem. Otherwise, I don't actually think I'm going to make you write out the units every single time because even I get tired of doing it. And truthfully, you can, I mean, what is our unit for volume going to be when we figure it out? Volume. No, what's the volume? Liter. What's volume measured in? Liter. Liter. So you know that, but just to show you. So we're solving for V. Here's what I recommend you do. I recommend you solve for V in the equation before you plug numbers in. So divide both sides by P, cancel P out, and you're left with you're left with uh, V is equal to N R T over P. Now does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well then you plug everything in. Yep, now all you now all you do, the only thing you gotta do now is literally <laughs> plug all your values in and do the math. So we know P is 1.01. 1 .01. You know, I'm going to write it below here, so let me write this out really quick. <coughs> oh, what do we got to do to temperature? I didn't even think about it. It'll be 298. Yep, so you'll have 298K. Do we always have to? Yes, you always, always, always must have your temperature in Kelvin. So let's actually just go and solve it now. So N is. What is the point of the Kelvin? What is the point of the, like why the, does the Kelvin scale exist? Uh, let me explain this to you. Know. Let me yeah, it's, it's more the exact temperature. It, just, it describes the level of motion in molecules. Give me one. Let me explain that after this problem. I'll give you a more detailed explanation. Zero is the lowest you can get in the universe. Yeah. So uh, next, we got moles. You just put an R. Now, just for this first problem, I'd really like it if you wrote out the whole thing. Then you put in T. Now, I just wanted you to see this now because you can look. And the reason that R has all these units, the reason R has like liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin, is because whatever you do now, it'll cancel out to be, in this case, volume liters. Because think about this. Moles is on top, it's on the bottom there, that cancels, Kelvin cancels, atmosphere cancels, and you're left with liters, which is the whole point of the problem. So if you do all this math, you end up with what? I don't want to use donut. 
Just 0 0.2? Okay. 0 0.2 liters. Uh, like 0 0.2 liters? Yeah. For the first couple, but then no more. Hang on, Risk raises his hand first. What? Zero point zero eight two one, right? Yes. Does that number like multiply with the L times ATM or whatever? Yeah. How do you multiply zero point zero eight two one by L? You don't. Those are units. Those are just there to get canceled out. Yes, they're units. They're not they're not numbers. Just units. That's the point that confuses a lot of people. Okay, what? Doesn't. Oh, okay. So, are there any questions on on this one? If not, then let's go to number four. I'm going to do number four, then, I'll, then I'm done. Then you guys can. Four involves one more conversion that you have to be aware of. Yeah. So if you look at number four, Take a look. What volume is occupied by 5.03 grams of O2 at 28 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 0.998? Okay, what do you notice? There's a number. There's grams. So what you've got to do, I'd go through and identify everything. Uh, you've got temperature, you've got pressure, it wants to find volume, and it gives you grams, which you can convert to moles. So that's all you got to do is just identify, convert, do the math, and you're done. So let's actually do that. You guys remember how to convert to moles? Yes. Oh, you better. Notice it's O2. So it's got to be 32. Because there's two of them. Do not forget that. Please don't forget that. This What does that come up to be? All right. So now, just let me copy everything in here, and you're uh, you just plug it in and solve. Don't forget to convert your temperature to. Temperature is three oh one k. Yep. <laughs> All right, so you've got all your stuff. Uh, what you, What is it, 301? Yeah. Don't forget to convert that by adding 273 to it. Now, you've got your equation. We're solving in this case for, uh, for what again? We're solving for volume again? Yep. All right, we're solving for volume again, so we're going to again. I recommend you do this first. I really do. Like, I think it's much easier to manipulate an equation. What? I, all I did was take PV and divided by P on both sides, so we would get volume by itself over What's here. PV that's that's the equation, and, and we're just solving for V. So we figure you move P to the bottom over here, so that you have V by itself. You know, so it's just easier to deal with. So I just plug stuff in and solve. I'm actually not going to write the units in this time, just so you can see it that way too, since you know what it'll be. What does that come out to be? What? It comes out 3.89. 3.89? Okay. Now, since we didn't write the units in, though, we got to think about this. We solve for volume. What are our units for volume always in? Liters. Liters. Always liters. 